My name is Chewy. I run the Jiu Jitsu YouTube channel and recently Stefan and I were on his Strenuous Life podcast episode 120. It's a really fun episode. You need to listen to it. And we were on there talking about you know wrestlers and adapting to Jiu Jitsu because I wrestled before I got into Jiu Jitsu. I'm going to share some of the things that I wish I would have maybe embraced or some of the lessons I learned from transitioning from wrestling into Jiu Jitsu. So that hopefully if you guys are transitioning from wrestling into Jiu Jitsu, this will be this video might make the transition a little smoother. Before I get into any of the techniques or any of the sort of the, uh, the conceptual ideas, the first thing to understand is you're doing Jiu Jitsu. One of the biggest problems that I had going into Jiu Jitsu from wrestling was that I still sort of held on to this identity that I was a wrestler. And so I, I didn't want to play for my back. I didn't want to wear the gi. I just wanted to take people down and sort of like hold them, right? And I know that sounds silly, but a lot of people get into Jiu Jitsu and they let little things get frustrated with them, like this thing, the gi. One of the biggest frustrations for most wrestlers getting into it is the gi because of all the grips and they're not used to them. And I know I was the same way. A lot of times when I used to train in the beginning, I would make lots of excuses. I would say, oh man, if you didn't have the gi on, I would have beat you. Or I would have got the escape if I didn't have the gi on. Or you know, you wouldn't have got that gi choke if we didn't have the gi on, whatever. I made excuses. So the big thing is, is if you get into Jiu Jitsu, from a wrestling background and you find that the gi is a little frustrating, stop making excuses for yourself about why you know this is becoming frustrating or why this is problematic and start sort of thinking about how to solve the problem. Thinking about solutions will make you ask better questions. Like, okay, how did they get the gi choke? Or how did that, why did that escape not work because of the gi? Like what kind of grips are getting in the way? How can I break those grips? Can I set the, the techniques up better? Because again, the gi can be a great training tool if you use it and you embrace it. So you have to embrace it. And again, that's part of embracing the greater whole of jiu-jitsu. So with that sort of thing out of the way, let's get to some of the more a concrete type idea. So the first one's gonna come from the guard. Again, probably one of the other biggest frustrations for most wrestlers is this thing, this position. Most wrestlers do not like playing from the guard because of the fact that they, you know, we were ingrained when we wrestled in high school or college or whatever you wrestled in, you were ingrained, you were indoctrinated to think that this is bad, right? Being on your back is bad and you would do drills and you would have people barking at you, never go to your back, right? Now you are in a situation where being on your back is a good thing. Like in this position, in a fighting situation, I have punches, which changes things a little bit, but as far as jiu-jitsu goes, I am in a bad spot. Because right now, aside from some one-off things, I don't have submission options. Chad is actually in the offensive position. And so as a wrestler, you know, again, like I know in the beginning, I felt comfortable here. I would take guys down and I would sit in their guard, I'm like, yeah, I'm doing great. And then all of a sudden, I'm getting submitted. Okay, because I had no idea what he was doing down there. Because I didn't want to learn it. And so you gotta think about this. Jiu-jitsu is kind of like, it's like language with the body, right? Grappling is like language with the body. And if Chad's grabbing onto my arm, he's, his body's telling me something. But if I don't understand the dialect, I can't interpret it. And what's happening right now is my arm's being threatened. If I know the bottom game, then I know to pull my arm back and to be more conscious of that. But again, wrestlers sometimes, they pull, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm gonna put my form, I'm gonna squeeze you, and then how many wrestlers have you seen grapple that get caught in that? myself included, this is what happened to me all the time. So one of the things that you have to think about early on in your Jiu Jitsu career is, especially if you're getting from wrestling to Jiu Jitsu, you probably got good takedowns, right? You probably got pretty good takedowns. Let's work on something that we need to work on, which is a really gonna be a sore area for you, the guard. And the reason is, is one, you need to make sure that you're good at from the position because you're probably gonna find yourself, whether your opponent maybe has good sweeps and they put you on your back, or you go up against a better wrestler, you'll find yourself on your back and you wanna have a versatile game. Look at any of the best jiu-jitsu practitioners. Most of them that are the high winners in jiu-jitsu and gi and no-gi competitions can typically play top or bottom, doesn't matter. They can play anywhere in the game. But also, just thinking from your own pure wrestler standpoint, if you're on top and you understand what's going on in the bottom because you've played from there and so you understand what all these grips are about, you have a better idea of what your opponent's doing. So if you're competing against someone, if you're just grappling against someone, you understand what their attacks are gonna be as they're doing it because you know all the grips. So it's very important for you as a wrestler to learn the bottom game, not just to be good from the guard, but to also be better on top. Because once I, my, just by the way, my coach forced me on my back for like three months. I didn't get to play on top for three months. And so in that three month time frame, I found that as I got better from sweeping and attacking from the bottom, my top game, when I did get on top from a sweep or something like that, my passing became much, so much better because then I could actually break the guard and pass. Now, from there, let me give you like sort of a, a tangible technique that maybe you can use. So in wrestling, one of the carryovers as far as technique wise is the hip heist. 
you know, it involves, uh, the sweep that we're gonna look like involves the same sort of hip drive that you have from a hip heist. So the sweep that we're gonna look at is the Kimura sweep. So basically, this happens whenever the person's hands really touch the mat, or if they sit back kind of far, we can come up and drive into it. I'm gonna talk about the one with the hands touching the mat variation. This is a lot of times where people set up Kimuras and things like that. So this can happen, one, if the person's unskilled or untrained, a lot of times they'll just post their hands on the mat, which is a bad idea, don't do that. But you can also create this situation by breaking the posture using your legs and hands. Now, once the hands touch the mat, this is your opening, okay? Because my hips are now free to move. With his hands on me, I can't move, right? He's pinning them down. But once the hands are on the mat, my hips and my body are free to move, and we can open our guard and sit up to our hand and drive up. Now, you can use it from your elbow here, which some people do, but I really like having the hand. It gives me a few more inches of drive to knock the person over. And from here, we drive our hips up, boom right up there and get that sweep, okay? Let's look at it from the other angle. So again, we're here, we break posture in some way. There's a lot of different posture breaks. As you uh, get into jiu-jitsu, you'll learn them. Keep our legs tight, open up, drive. And again, if you wrestle, you're probably familiar with the hip heist. And that's a great example of a carryover from wrestling that'll work into your jiu-jitsu game, which is that, that hip drive. Okay, next thing that I would share with you guys as wrestlers is that the tempo is going to change in jiu-jitsu, right? One of the things that I found myself struggling with in jiu-jitsu in the beginning was I had this wrestler sort of tempo, this wrestler pace, which was go, 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 all the time. And if you think about wrestling, a lot of times the grips that you have in wrestling um, are limited because they don't want stalling to happen. And also in wrestling, the stalling calls come quick. And jiu-jitsu is no such thing, right? God, you can, I can take Chad's gi and I can wrap this sucker all around him and grab on his belt and, and he can't move, right? And there's no rules to say that that's illegal. So you're going to get bogged down in grip sometimes and you have to slow down. Also, when you think about it, you know, uh, with the, um, the stalling calls, Jiu-Jitsu doesn't get stalling calls like wrestling did. Like you see guys doing nothing sometimes and they don't get called for anything. So they're not nearly as liberal uh, with the stalling calls. And one of my guys that was in here was a college wrestler at one point. We were watching a, a world championship match together and the two guys are basically tangled up with each other. And he's watching, he's like, why, why are they just sitting there looking at each other? Why don't they move? And he, I was like, well, if you look, see all these different grips, they're all tangled up and they're walking on a tightrope right now where basically the first one that makes a mistake is gonna lose because the other one's gonna get the submission that they were looking for. And he just couldn't understand it. And then when we started rolling a little bit more in the gi, he started to get the idea as he got tangled up. So the tempo is going to change. Um, and sort of some examples of that are, what I wanna share with you, we'll use this as a segue to talk about some submissions. Let's say as a wrestler, you broke the guard open and you start to really fight, boom, 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 and you get past the guard. Okay, usually right after the guard pass, that is a really tough thing to do. Like, I know that like when I'm rolling with Chad, he's a fantastic guard. Me getting past his guard requires a lot of energy spent. Once I get to side control, I'm not gonna keep moving. I get down, I block the hip here because we always need to keep the, the, the hip that's closest to us blocked, and we breathe. Relax, again, kind of counterintuitive compared to wrestling, because if it was wrestling, we, if we were in the down position, we'd still be going, 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 going. But in jiu-jitsu, this is where we catch our breath, and we look at all the options in front of us and we, work, we wait to attack. Now, as a wrestler, I'm not gonna show you guys every setup in the book, I'm giving you guys some ideas to sort of maybe give you an outline or a structure, a scaffolding that you can use. A couple are, uh, attacks that I would look for as a wrestler would be key locks and key morris. Reason being, you're probably as a wrestler, wrestler going to be naturally comfortable here because it's you're pinning someone. This is, this is very comfortable. I know what this is, I'm pinning someone. You know, in wrestling you do this a number of different ways. Now, once you get here, you'll be able to pin the opponent, but now you need to look for the submissions because we're not pinning anybody. And usually you'll find that the arms are not too far out of reach. And so learning how to do a good setup to a key lock, Kimura and other arm locks can be a great tool for your game. And again, going back to my own experience, and as a coach teaching wrestlers, lots of them, our best attacks starting off were key locks, kimuras, and uh, arm attacks. And if I'm correct, the key lock here, which is where the hand comes up towards the head, it was named, uh, nicknamed the Americana because of a lot of the old American wrestlers who learned jiu-jitsu, that's what they immediately would sort of favor. I'm not sure if that's the, that's the case, but that was like the myth that was told to us back in the day. Um, so again, that's what we kind of know it as. So guys, if you are a wrestler transitioning into jiu-jitsu, I hope that these 
little tips have helped, been helpful. I know that th I didn't give you the exact, this is the technique that you have to use. But again, everyone's gonna be different and you're gonna have to figure some of that stuff out yourself. But again, the biggest thing that I can share with you, learning from my own experience and as a coach who's taught plenty of wrestlers over the years, right, some really good wrestlers, is to always, again, embrace jiu-jitsu when you get into it. Embrace it. You're doing jiu-jitsu now, you're not a wrestler. Lose the identity, embrace jiu-jitsu for what it is. Your, your takedowns are good, work on that guard. You need to work on it, you have to limit yourself. Sometimes your coach isn't gonna be able to do it like I did, like mine did. You need to even make a, a sort of a mental note for yourself. When I go into the gym, I'm working from the guard. And one side note about that guard thing, don't do this. If you're playing from the guard, don't just kick away and get up to a takedown. Every wrestler that I, I see like that tries to play guard, that's their, and again, I said it, I did that. My, my original goal was I, I'm gonna play from guard. Okay, and I'm just gonna kick away and get up to a takedown. Play from guard, learn the sweeps. Do all the stuff that your coach is teaching you from those positions, embrace it, okay? Learn to change your tempo a bit. Again, you're gonna find that if you go at that wrestling pace, guys are gonna hang on to you, they're not gonna move, they're gonna be relaxing while you're expending energy, and then you're gonna tire out, and, and then you're gonna be a sitting duck. And the last thing that I shared in the video would be simply to find some attacks from side control. Again, you can get on YouTube, you can get on Stefan's website, you can get on my website, wherever you want to go to. There's plenty of good resources out there. Side control is going to be your go-to bread and butter place to attack in the beginning, and that'll give you kind of your home base to attack from, and you can set up a multitude of different attacks from that position once you get proficient with it. So guys, if you're transitioning to jiu-jitsu from wrestling, I hope this video is helpful to you, and I'll talk to you guys next time.